Good morning on this Easter morning. I read from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 15, verse 12 through 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 12 through 20. Now, if Christ is preached that he rose from the dead, now say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead. But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Yea, if we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God, that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, ye are yet in your sins. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. And if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. Our Father in heaven, thank you for this time. Thank you for your word. We ask you to guide us in the presentation of these thoughts that Christ be exalted. I ask your forgiveness of, our, of my sins. Use us today. For Christ's sake, I pray. Amen. What a terrible thought. Then is Christ not risen? Throughout history, there have been men who have tried to defy the very reality of death and have not accomplished. The Old Testament, everything, pointed to the cross. Then, also, not only to the cross, but also to the message that he rose from the dead. But Paul's question is quite simply this. If he be not risen, first of all, if he be not risen, then our preaching is vain. The word vain, of course, means empty or without purpose. Beginning in verse number one of the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians, Paul writes, Moreover, I declare, uh, moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which ye have received and wherein ye stand, whereby, uh, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, lest ye believe in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scripture, that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the Scripture, and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. And after that, he was seen of above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. The very fact of the gospel itself, how that Christ died for our sins, was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. If our preaching is vain, if the message that we have make disciples of all nations, Matthew 28, Mark 16, preach the gospel to every creature. If we are proclaiming an empty message, if Christ is not, is not risen, there is no purpose for it. There's no reason for what we do. We might as well go home because if our preaching is vain, telling folk their need to be saved, telling folk how Jesus loved them and died for their sins and rose again the third day, if that proclamation is empty and useless, what exactly are we doing? He continues by adding, if our preaching is vain, then our faith is vain as well. 
The word faith, trust, belief, all of that, all those synonymous words that go with faith, persuasion. You know, we have to exercise faith to be saved. For by grace are you saved through faith. The disciples said one time, Lord, increase our faith. Increase our trust, our belief, our persuasion. Paul would write, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers. Basically, what Paul is saying here, if Christ be not risen, we have nothing of which to hold on to to trust in, to be persuaded by, we are standing on empty promises if our faith is vain. To be honest with you, there are some folk that within their system of faith, their system of belief, it is vain because it's contrary to the teaching of Scripture. And that nagging thought, is it enough? Am I doing enough? Am I keeping enough? Well, faith tells us that we can trust what the Lord has told us. It is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. But if Christ is still in the grave and long gone, then our belief in the gospel, our belief in the instructions from Scripture are all empty. Oh, Paul also added in verse 15 that we are found to be false witnesses. Everyone, all of the apostles, all of God's people from years past that have proclaimed the message, that have trusted in that message, they are all false witnesses. They're lying. Now let that, that, let that sink in a bit. Do you realize if Christ is still in the grave, we're lying about the past, about the present, and about the future of God's kingdom business in this world. False witnesses. We're simply telling a story with no basis in spiritual fact. There's nothing more hurtful than a false witness. There's some other things in that top 10 list, but a false witness, someone that is telling something untrue, it just shakes you to the core. But if Christ be not risen, then we're lying. And we should be considered to be false witnesses. He also adds in verse number 17, your faith is vain, ye are yet in your sins. What does that mean? That means that if Christ is not risen, then we still have not had our sins paid for. We are still outside of the, of the uh, saving grace of the Almighty, we are still in condemnation. We are still, or would be classified as, an unbeliever. Now let's take a moment here and remember that the word sin is defined as the breaking of God's law. First 
John chapter 3 and verse number 4, last part of verse 4, for sin is a transgression of the law. Now, we were born with a sin nature. Now, what exactly does that mean? Well, Romans 5 and verse 12, wherefore as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin. So we are born with the predisposition to break God's law. And if Christ be not risen, then we're still, we are still under the condemnation of the Almighty because of unbelief. Now, our preaching is empty. Our faith is empty. We are false witnesses to this fact along with the apostles, along with the prophecies of the Old Testament scriptures, and we're still under the condemnation of sin. Terrible, terrible thing. And notice also in verse number 18, then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. The dead have perished. Now, when we lay someone in the ground, a loved one in the ground, as saved people, we have a hope, we have an expectation that they will one day rise from the dead. The resurrection. The last part of this chapter, chapter 15, starting with verse 51, writes about in a moment, the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 4, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. And it speaks about the resurrection. It speaks about the time when we will meet the Lord in the air. There are those who believe that when a person passes from this life, that they just cease to exist. There's, there is, you know, there is no mortality of the, there is Im, no immortality of the soul. But for saved people, when a person leaves this world, they go to be in the arms of Jesus. We know that. Just like the Old Testament saints went to paradise and the rich young and the rich man perished in hell, the eternal life of the soul. Well, if Christ be not risen, then when we as saved people, when we as God's children leave this world, there is nothing out there. There is nothing beyond this life. They just perish. They're gone. And there is no expectation of ever seeing them again. He also writes in verse number uh, 20, or excuse me, verse number 19, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we of all creatures most miserable. If this is all there is, folks, if the only purpose in life is to gain things and to leave what we have to our children and the process to be repeated, if this is all there is, if there's no expectation, the word hope means to expect something. If there is hope, remember 1 Thessalonians 4, he said that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For the unsaved, there is no expectation of glory, only punishment. Have no hope. Remember the fruits of the Spirit? 
love these three and one of them is hope charity faith okay well if Christ is not risen then that's out okay that's out Paul's saying we have no hope this is it what we have in this life is it and we're of all creatures most miserable. Everything in this world loses its luster after a while. And it's just not as exciting as it once was. But in verse number 21, verse number 20, Paul asserts, he said, but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. First, he gives these evidences as to if Christ is not risen, this is what happened. These are the things, these six things, which basically say our preaching is vain, our faith is vain, our, uh, we're false witnesses, we're still in our sins, those are loved ones who've gone on or just perished, and we have no hope. But now is Christ risen and become the first fruits of them that slept. Folks, he is alive. He did rise from the dead. I have mentioned before about some archaeologists that they, they swore that they would find the bones of Jesus. Well, they never did because he rose from the dead on the third day. Now, I have a picture here I hope that you can see. In fact, that's me holding this card up behind it. And this is the tomb, okay? On the left side, you have the weeping chamber. Whenever someone was laid on the right side, the family would have time to go in and stand there and mourn their passing. Then you have three places where loved ones would be laid. Now, in the case of Jesus, they did not have time to do the usual process for someone who had passed. They had to get him down off the cross and get him in the tomb before Passover began at 6 o'clock on Wednesday. So from 3 o'clock in the afternoon till 6 o'clock Wednesday afternoon, they had to get him down and get him in the tomb. Okay? And this next picture is, of course, the outside of the tomb. Now, if you can see this flower pot there, sitting there, that's where the trench is that they rolled the stone in place. Now the reason for that brick there is because at one time there was a battle or a war in that country and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, a bomb had tore that section out so they rebuilt it. But there's, the, there's the trough where the stone would roll into place. And this is the outside, and that whole area is a beautiful, they've decorated it to a beautiful garden. Okay? But that is the outside of it. But this next picture is important because there are those three places where they would lay the dead, and you can see that there's nobody there, there and there hasn't been anyone there. In fact, this is what's called Joseph's new tomb, remember? And it is empty. And it's always been empty. That stone that was rolled away from the door, folks, it wasn't just cracked a little bit for him to squeeze out. That angel moved that thing away from the door. And it was huge. I would say up to about two tons. And the trough was about 18 inches wide. So it was a massive stone that was there. And it was rolled away from the door. 
So yes, now is Christ risen from the dead. Okay? Now that term, first fruits of them that slept, there was a group of people that rose from the dead when he arose. First fruits. But I wanted you to see that this tomb is empty. We stood in the weeping area of the tomb and uh, took pictures of the inside. So I hope that this Easter Sunday that we can all stand and rejoice because he is alive. If he isn't, then everything that we have put our faith in is vain. Everything that we've been telling people about how Jesus loves them and desires them to be born again, it's all empty. And that message, Paul's testimony, that he was seen of above 500 brethren at once, they were all lying. They were all false witnesses. Two men on the road to Emmaus. He appeared with them and walked with them and then and then disappeared in their, uh, in their presence. They're lying. Okay? But if he is risen, and he is risen, then their testimony is true. And we have a hope and a belief that when we share the gospel message that somebody can know Jesus as their Savior, they can put their faith in him, they can understand that this is not the end. It's simply a temporary parting when we lay someone in the ground and that one day we will see them again. Father in heaven, thank you for this time. Thank you for the fact that you have risen from the dead. Lord, how we pray your blessing on this wonderful time. When I ask for the healing of those who are sick. I ask for the comfort of those who've lost loved ones. And Lord, protect those who are, have not, uh, are not sick. And Lord, we're so grateful that you are alive and that one day we will see you again. For it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen.